Welcome back everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 2023 Porsche 911 GT3 RS. So this now has 1,110 horsepower, 845 pounds-feet of torque from a 4-litre twin-turbocharged flat-six engine. The car itself now weighs 3,093 3 pounds, sorry. So quite lightweight and that's despite the fact that it now has all-wheel drive in addition to off-road tyres and off-road suspension and it can only 0 to 16 2.606 seconds and 0 to 105.062 seconds and going to a top speed of 257 miles an hour so yeah Porsche have had reasonably good success with cars on this series so far they have two cars that aren't all that far off the top 50 with the Mission R being the fastest of the of the five that have gone before but the more conventional vehicles like the 550A Spider and the 911 Desert Flyer have done not as well as that car but yeah it's generally the 550A Spider and the Mission R that have done the best of the bunch with the 911 Desert Flyer being really rather underwhelming considering what it is the McCann LPR Rally Raid being extremely disappointing what it, considering what it is and the Taycan Turbo S being predictably not that great so um, yeah it's going to be interesting to see where this lands because obviously it is more meant for the track and therefore it's not really meant for going off road but as you can see stat wise it is pretty damn good um, off road capability, braking, launch, acceleration and even handling and speed yeah there's no real issues there at all with the car so uh, yeah usually at least one of those elements is underwhelming it's typically the handling so uh, yeah, the fact that that's even at 6.6 .6 when a lot of cars are below even 5 should mean that this is going to be quick. What it comes down to is whether or not it can handle the extra power because we've got more than twice the power we had originally. Can it handle the all-wheel drive system? And can it deal with the off-road elements? They're the three main areas, so... Yeah. Hopefully it's uh, going to do alright. usual to have so much handling on a car on this series. Usually we are struggling for that. We have seen that a lot of cars on this series that are fast are the kind that you wouldn't typically find on a course like this. So it stands to reason that this will be uh, also a quick one. Oh dear, if we get it far. Going over that bump, well, I say bump more like a hill, really was not a str good strategic decision there, so we've only got one of our rewinds left now, but that was entirely down to me and not the car, so if I sort my ideas out, the car will follow suit. Really rather incredible brakes, which are definitely going to help on this course, where sometimes you can have your wheels completely in the air and therefore you don't have any brakes at all, so you need them to work as fast as possible for when you do come back down to earth. full, you know, big V8 hybrid twin turbo thing that we used on how fast will it go, purely because I figured it's plenty fast enough even with this engine in it, so why add an extra few hundred horsepower and more weight when it's really not necessary at all in a car like this for a, on a course like this. Sure it's necessary to get it to a good rate of speed, but on here you need controllability speed all at the same time and this is a good mix between the two and at the end of the day it's more suitable to this car given you know it had a flat six originally not as powerful as this even in stock form it's still a flat six so it makes sense to have it in this car as well the front end is bouncing up at times that's purely because there's no real weight up front in comparison to the rear end around a little bit there. Obviously I 
a fair decent amount of speed, about 177 miles an hour, you will get nearly 2,000 pounds worth of downforce in this car, but obviously we're not getting up to those kind of speeds, so even though we have the capability to have that kind of handling, we don't really have the opportunity to get that kind of handling here, just because, well, we don't really get up to those kind of speeds around corners, really, so, uh, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. Well, we're going to be the fastest Porsche, uh, not by a million miles, but we are the fastest and only less at 3 minutes 16.663 seconds, whereas the Mission R, which was the fastest uh, Porsche before this, managed 3 minutes 17.239. So, yeah, not, uh, not a million miles ahead, like I said, only just under 0.6 of a second faster, but faster at the end of the day is faster. So, uh, yeah, and with that time, that means we are also quicker than the likes of... A Diberti Toyota Tacoma TRD performance truck, the Lucid Air Sapphire, the Lotus Esprit uh, Turbo, the Dodge Coronet Super B, a, a Hennessy Venom F5, a Subaru WRX SDA ARX Supercar, Plymouth Barracuda Formula S, a McLaren 765LT, a Nissan GTR Nismo, and a Hyundai Kona N. We are ever so slightly behind, and I mean ever so slightly, about less than 0 0.03 of a second. Uh, the Sierra Cars Yokohama Alpha, also slightly slower than a Fiat 131, a Pontiac GTO Judge, and then Chevrolet Nova Supersport. What's really surprising with this series is not just you know you've got your hypercars and your supercars and your your track orientated vehicles that have been pretty quick, but we've also had plenty of classic muscle cars that have been fast. Two of which are obviously well, three of which in fact, because also the Shelby GT500 is ever so slightly quicker than this by just over 0.6 of a second. So, uh, yeah, several um, classic muscle cars or classic American cars in general have been really rather quite quick on this series. So, uh, that's also a uh, area of uh, this series to point out. But still, this has done really, really well. And uh, yeah, if I was able to keep a hold of it a little bit easier or more manageable at times, it would have been even faster but it did have some issues, especially with the front end bobbing up and down at times. So, uh, yeah, but on the whole, a properly quick car, and the newest and, well, the fastest Porsche that we've had on this series so far. Whether or not it can be beaten, we'll have to see, but obviously we do have a few more Porsches coming to this game in the next few weeks. We have the Porsche 911 Rally coming soon as well, so it's going to be interesting to see what a car that is made for going off-road can do in comparison to a car that is made for going on the track. But nonetheless, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.